Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm the senior technician, one of the senior technicians over here, as well as the warranty specialist at Volkbike. In today's video, we are going to go over a few separate issues. Uh, number one, a motor core removal and or replacement. Uh, we're also going to cover what to examine as far as a failed speed sensor reading, um, as well as go over some fundamentals for planetary gear replacement. Uh, so a few things you will need to do these uh, tasks. Uh, number one, an 18 millimeter wrench. Number two, a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, a couple of hammers, a rubber mallet as well as a metal hammer will be good. A Phillips head screwdriver, a slotted head screwdriver. And depending on your motor, you will also require a T20 pin style Torx fitting. So that's basically a Torx um, a fastener bit with a dowel inside. So those are known as either a safety Torx or a pin style Torx. Uh, if you have a Yukon, then it might be a three, three millimeter Allen key to remove those bolts. Uh, so for the purposes of this video, I have gone ahead and removed uh, the wheel. Uh, so that's obviously just done by spinning off the axle nuts with your 18 millimeter wrench. Obviously, you're going to want to snip the cables on the frame in order to remove uh, the, the the power harness from there. Uh, so, for the purposes of this video, obviously, I've got a stand here. Your uh, home conditions might not be as ideal as this, uh, but uh, for all intents and purposes, I actually like to remove the derailleur from the B-axle and just sort of hang it on the bike out of the way, and that will actually allow the motor itself to drop out a lot easier. Failing that, if you don't want to remove the derailleur, you can remove the hardware entirely off of the axle and then that will allow it to clear the B axle on the derailleur. A couple of tips and tricks uh, as we get started here. Uh, keep your workspace nice and organized. You'll have a much higher probability of success if you're not losing any of the hardware. Uh, when I disassemble hardware from an axle, I'll put it on the bench in the order it was taken off. So these came off first, these came off second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. That way when you're replacing them, you just reverse the order and it goes on in the correct orientation. Now, uh, depending on the case, you may have a 07E uh, error code, which is a hall sensor error, uh, at which point you can either buy a replacement core or rebuild one or a new one or send it in to repair for us. A 01E error code may also warrant replacement of the core. Um, so these, uh, these instructions will help with this. More than likely, when you receive your rebuilt core or new core from us, it will arrive in this condition. No planetary gears with the pin alignment for the, the, the just beside the pinion gear in place. You can see there's a little C-clamp there. We want to keep all that hardware together. Um, and then if you are having an issue with speed sensors and all that kind of stuff, this is where the magnets are located right there. So depending on your motor, you may have one or you may have six and those align with a speed sensor that's built into the exterior side of the motor there. So now, so that's for, this one is for Bravo or an Elegant. As you can see, the fit is actually quite snug to there. Uh, there are different other motor orientations, such as some for our Yukon 750, which you can see have a little bit of a different shape. This one's got the planetary gear already installed. But on this side, you can see the speed sensor sticks up a little bit, so there is a collar it gets put on the axle shaft there to keep that motor plate spaced away from the sensor. As you can see, there's the adequate amount of clearance there between the magnets and the speed sensor itself. So yeah, so most of the rules apply uh, for all of our motors as far as disassembly and reassembly. So uh, what works for this motor will more than likely work for this one as long as you keep your hardware in the right orientation when you're rebuilding. Okay, so I actually chose to use this particular motor um, as a reference because we've actually had some issues uh, with the axle on the motor itself. It seems to be sticking on the exterior bearing here, so this is a problem that you may or may not encounter um, while you're removing your motor core. I only see this with about 1% of, uh, of motor core removals. Uh, so again, just a little bit of persistence, a little bit of precautions will help you uh, ensure your success in the end. Uh, a couple of other tips. Uh, you may be swinging a hammer against some metal. Some particles may fly, so ensure you wear some safety glasses. Rubber gloves are not a bad idea. Uh, if your motor is high mileage and you're replacing the motor core, it's also a good idea to have some lithium grease on hand. 
that will go on the inside of the motor helps repel water quite nicely when it comes to electronics. Uh, but if your motor is new and you're just doing a warranty swap, it should already be pre-greased in there, but we will go over that on examination. Uh, so first things first, um, if you are reusing the motor plate, there isn't a need to take off the freewheel. That will all come off as one is on what, uh, sorry, in one assembly. The freewheel itself actually threads on to this sort of faux freehill body style looking thing here. And obviously that sort of goes out from there. But for this case, we're actually not going to be using this exterior plate. We're going to be reusing the existing one because the magnets are intact. So we're just going to be replacing the uh, planetary gears as well as the motor core in this one. So um, I've actually already gone ahead and replaced the planetary gear in this um, before we discovered that there was other issues with the motor. So this is the old planetary gear set that came out of the motor. And you can see in this case, two of the wheels are spinning freely, but one of them is not. And it has actually started to self-clearance itself along the carrier here. So again, something may have happened where the, the shaft was bent or an axle or sorry, a bearing may have seized. Uh, in either case, uh, this is just a replacement. We have these available for sale. They are $65 plus shipping. Uh, and then again, so these are, um, these are a sort of a perishable item depending on the, con the conditions. Too much load can cause these wheels to crack. Uh, too much water can cause these bearings to seize. Uh, so there are a number of issues why you will have to replace these. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and attempt to remove the core from the motor itself. As you can see, there are six bolts, and these are those T20 pin type Torx. Uh, so you can get a tool that has a handle for the shop purposes. So you have an electric screwdriver here. Uh, you don't want to be turning the torque up too high. Uh, if you are using a drill of some sort, because you will rip these heads off, and uh, if you strip those, it's a bit of a nightmare. So first things first, I wouldn't go any higher than about 12 Newton meters. If it starts to fight you, you can turn it up one click from there. Uh, but to ensure you don't strip these, tool engagement is incredibly important. And by which I mean the depth and accuracy that the tool is set into the actual fastener itself. So make sure it's nice and straight, make sure it's set nice and deep, and then you won't actually rip off the heads from the bolt there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these six bolts. So from this point, you're also going to want to just examine your axle. In order for the motor core to come out, you're obviously going to make, have to make sure the hardware on the non-drive side is removed. This axle will go through this hole, so obviously it needs to be clear in order to do so. From here, I'll go ahead and put the wheel on the ground. And I'm going to start kind of gently tapping it with my rubber mallet. Now again, I am pretty familiar with this motor because I did have it apart earlier, so I know it's sticking on the bearing side here. So I may have to apply a little extra force to this particular motor, but more than likely a few little gentle tugs will help it come out. As you can see, it's already started to move there. So actually it was a little bit less problematic than I anticipated. And there's your extracted core right there. So freewheel assembly stays on the faceplate or the motor cover plate. Planetary gear, as you can see, is on there, and that's it. So, preliminary examination of the inside of the motor core is always a good idea. Take a look at the condition of the inside of that bearing. Is it rust? Is it? Is it actually spinning freely? Is there plant? Is there lithium grease on the the outer gear arrangement on the inside of the motor core? There, that all looks good. So, from here. Uh, again, the motor the, just had a new planetary gear installed, but the motor core itself um, has been uh, a result of a crash. As you can see, the wire harness is, is in need of repair there, so we are going to replace that. So first things first, we're going to remove the nylon planetary gear. A couple of ways you can do that. Uh, you can take the a slotted screwdriver here and just sort of slightly arrange it inside here and just gently push up. If it fights you in any way, shape, or form and doesn't come up easy, don't over torque it. Remove the tool entirely, take the motor core, flip it upside down, and smack it against a nice hard surface, a piece of wood on the floor, something like that. And I'm just going to do that here, and you'll see the planetary gear fall out. As you can see, it's coming off. Sometimes it comes off easier than others. Just be persistent. Watch your fingers. And there it is. 
Okay, so some things to be mindful of on the shaft, just beyond the pinion gear here, there is a little key. So this guy actually can be removed. You're gonna wanna make sure that that is in place. That actually fits a groove on the planetary gear here and stops it from spinning on the axle. So make sure all that is there. Okay, so from there, we're gonna be removing our motor plate and freewheel assembly. And this should just sort of slide off pretty simply there. There's no fasteners or anything like that. That's actually just held down by compression from those bolts there. So you can take a look at your original motor. This one has some resistance in the spinning. It's kind of hard to illustrate that from the video, but I can feel it in my hand. Uh, this one will be shipped off for repair. Um, if your motor is being shipped in for repair, this is generally the condition we're going to want to see it in. So just make sure if there is any slip hardware or any of that kind of stuff, you're going to want to keep that so that when you reassemble it, you've got everything good to go. So there's our old core out. It's not a bad idea if you are replacing the cores, just take a look at them, make sure they match as far as axle length is concerned. Make sure all the hardware is there, like that pin right beside the pinion gear, or sorry, the uh, planetary gear key is what it's known as. That's that, that guy there. Okay. So old motor out, new motor in. So you can see the difference here between a worn or broken planetary gear towards a new one. Two of these are spinning fairly easily, one of them is not. Uh, because this rotates inside the motor, we need these all to be spinning freely. If there isn't any uh, free motion in this, it will cause an excessive amount of load on the motor. Uh, which can cause it to overheat and go into limp mode or cause it to shut down entirely. Um, or worse, it will just catch and start to rip apart these planetary gears causing horrible noise. Uh, regardless, as you can see, two of those spin, one of them doesn't. The new planetary gear just inspected again. That all spins nicely. Everything looks good and sure it's nice and clean. Uh, while we've got this part open here, again, so here are the magnets for the sensors. If you are having the issue of uh, no speed reading, again, you'll either have a single or six magnets. Uh, this will correspond to settings in the display. We have a link available on the help center on how to program that as well too. Uh, so again, just to ensure that the magnets are actually installed occasionally from excessive vibration or whatever, these will find themselves out. Uh, you may find them actually stuck to the magnets of the motor themselves, right? Uh, so again, just examine any of these grooves inside there. Make sure there's no uh, metal filings or any of that, things of that nature inside the motor core itself before you proceed. Okay. okay, so from here, we're going to be taking our new motor and then we're gonna be putting our existing motor plate and freewheel assembly over the drive wire like that and again that just sort of slides on no tools necessary there make sure that's spinning freely that bearing shouldn't be causing any noise any of that sort of thing and you're going to flip the motor over planetary gear goes down so that it meshes with that pinion gear that's on the inside and again you're going to want to line up that groove with that key now just for shop uses we obviously use a vise for something like this it just acts as an extra set of hands should I need to use a mallet or anything like that to install the planetary gear. So I'm just going to cinch that in there. So there's my key. There's my groove. Line them up as best as you can as you're going down the shaft. And if you haven't got it perfect, right when you start to engage the gears, you can just sort of turn the rotation and it will help itself down. So as you can see, we've partially engaged those gears. You can spin the motor and watch the planetary gears spin. Just like that, and then in order to cinch it down on there, don't be afraid to just use your rubber mallet ever so gently and just, you know, sort of 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock positions. Just gently tap it into place until that's basically flush down mount there. So as you install the motor core back in, it will compress this in, but you do want to make sure it's seated as deeply as possible so that you're not making those bolts do the work and potentially stripping out your motor housing. So as you can see now, we've got our entire motor core assembly reassembled. Very pretty simple stuff on that guy. So we're gonna actually now reinstall it into the motor itself. Again, 
So you have your pinion gear on the inside, your planetary gear on the outside, and then you've got your motor shell gear engagement as well too. You're going to want to make sure that these uh, planetary gears mesh with the gears in the exterior of the motor shell. And you'll do that by having your 10 millimeter wrench handy on the flat side of the axle to spin it as we're putting it inside the motor and that will help those lodge in there nice and smoothly. So you'll start this way. Obviously line up the axle into that hole. Get it as close as you can, a little vibration, a little jiggling. It will fight you at this point. So this is where you take your 10 millimeter and as you're pushing, just rotate the assembly and boom, you'll see a lock into position there. And on the external side, you'll make sure those holes line up. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then you'll take your T20 tool or your three millimeter, depending on which, uh, which motor you're working on. And I usually just stage the screws to start so that you can allow a little bit of adjustment. So just get them in there. Put all six of those in at first. Just start them off. Okay, and then from this point, um, I would like to see these tighten down to 12 Newton meters. If you're using an electric screwdriver, turn it to the number 12. If you've got a torque wrench, 12 Newton meters of torque. And you're going to want to make sure you tighten in a star pattern so that it, it all centers nice and evenly. So we'll start here, go to the opposite side, another opposite side, opposite side, and so on and so forth. Just like that. And now from this point, you can spin the free wheel, make sure it spins. Take your 10 millimeter wrench, spin the axle, make sure that spins freely with no grinding noises. Forward you'll get a little bit more resistance than you go backwards. That is completely normal. That is as it should be. From this point, we're going to replace the hardware on the unit uh, in the order that it was disassembled. So we've got our anti-spin washer. Make sure those are pointed the same way. So the anti-spin washer is both facing down on both the drive and the non-drive side. Right, so there's that, and then exterior of that will be a washer, and then a nut. Just like that. And again, just stage these, gives you, give yourself a lot of room. Um, as far as being able to put that on the bike, that'll give you a little bit more uh, more ease of install. And then on the freewheel side, more than likely you will have a spacer first. That goes and fits internally inside there. After that, you'll have your anti-spin washer again. You're going to want that with a little tab facing out on both sides. So on the non-drive side, it will be facing to the left. And on the drive side, it will be facing to the right. Make sure the orientation is the same. So if one is pointing down, make sure it matches on the other side. Just like that. Now we'll do our washer. As well as our axle nut. little patience and persistence go a long way when you're doing this. So take your time. Don't get frustrated. Okay, so from here, we're ready to put it back in the bike. I'm just going to go over a couple of tips uh, for ease of install as far as that goes as well too. So I, as you can see from the rear triangle here, I have removed the derailleur and I've got it hanging just sort of on the bash guard there. Uh, it's not a necessary step, it's just something I do uh, here at the shop to ease the installation process. Uh, in order to put the wheel in, I actually find it's dramatically easier if I remove the rear brake caliper from the adapter side. So, as you can see, there are two bolts here that hold the adapter to the frame. It's not a bad idea just to spin those off. Your brake will retain its original adjustment if you don't touch these two bolts. So if you just put it on from here, it should be exactly the way that you left it before. 
Hence why I start at this point. Okay, I'll just leave that hanging outside the frame. Keep your bolts somewhere easily you can access them. Okay, not a bad idea while you're here to just give the bike a little bit of a wipe down. A little bit of gentle degreaser on a cloth is adequate. You can clean the inside of your dropouts from here, the inside of your chain and seat stays. Probably one of the easiest times to clean your bike is when it's disassembled, so don't be shy to go nuts here should you choose to do so. There's a quick little preliminary clean up there. Okay, so here comes a bit of a tricky part, reapplying the rear wheel, particularly if you don't have a stand. This might be something that you want to get somebody to help you with, holding up the bike uh, or any of those sort of things. Uh, if you're working on a makeshift stand from home, not a bad idea to suspend some straps, you know, some big heavy duty ratchet straps from your ceiling if you've got access to do so. You can then hang that around the seat and around the stem, keep that upright and then you've got a little bit of a, 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 a more con conducive workstation. So when I'm staging the wheel for the install, I like to keep my 18 millimeter and my 10 millimeter wrench handy within arm's reach. The 18 millimeter obviously will be for tightening down the axle nuts and the 10 millimeter will be for spinning the axle to make sure that it lines up with the dropouts. The 10 millimeter side of the dropouts will fit on the flat sides of the dropout here. Obviously the 12 millimeter side will be too big. So again, give yourself a lot of room as far as where the nuts are on the axle. It's never a horrible idea. I put just a little drop of oil on the threads of your axle that will help your nuts spin on a little nicer. And you can do most of it by hand without having to do a tool. Okay, now anti-spin rotation washers should always be pointed down. If you point them up, it'll drop the wheel itself in the dropouts and uh, nothing's going to align properly. You won't get proper gear brake engagement. So again, make sure those anti-spins are facing down before you put the wheel in. Okay. So coming in from the back of the wheel, derailleurs out of the way, calipers out of the way. You can spin the axle at this point in order to make that anti-spin. You know, so if you've got it this way, it's okay. It's probably easier just to spin it backwards to get yourself started. Simply slide the wheel into place. As you can see, I'm holding it with one hand, using my other hand to slur to gently snug down the hardware. And again, sometimes they will snag, so you will have to hold it. This is where it becomes a little bit tricky, trying to hold the wheel in the dropouts as well as tighten the fasteners at the same time. But again, be patient, and you'll have a higher probability of success. So I'm not gonna go nuts on tightening, tightening until I've got both sides in. So I've just got the, the hardware kind of almost snug down there. I'm gonna examine the drive side as well too. And again, spin that side down. While you're doing this, just visually inspect. Make sure that uh, that axle is well seated in the dropouts. And that will actually make sure that your brake is easier to tune and everything afterwards. Just spin that guy down. As you can see, this is another reason why I've removed the derailleur for this purpose. This gets it out of the way so I can actually swing the wrench. So just before I snug the bike down, I'm going to visually inspect both sides, make sure the dropouts are seated nice and deeply, and then go ahead and tighten them down. Don't rip the hardware apart, but make sure these bolts are tight. You don't want your wheel coming off while you're riding. There's one. Oh. 
just like that. Okay, and then my next step, I'll go ahead and reapply the brake caliper. So again, I haven't touched the adjustment in relation to the brake adapter itself, so it should just be a direct slide on. Just like that. Uh, if you are using a torque wrench, uh, these bolts should be set between 11 and 14 newton meters. Again, I don't normally cinch that one down until I place this bolt, otherwise it'll stop you from being able to adjust it and line it up. Again, ensure those are nice and snug. Nine to, or sorry, 11 to 14 newton meters on those guys. Okay, now we'll jump back over onto the drive side to reapplying the derailleur. So as you can see, I've got the derailleur sort of hanging there. If I'm to push this back, I can then just spin the derailleur back up. Here's one of my little trade secrets as far as derailleur reinstallation, should you decide to take it off. So I'll spin it up, again check the orientation, it should be a backwards S. So you're going to want to go around the right side of the top pulley and the left side of the bottom pulley, staying inside the derailleur cage. And usually I'll actually just take one hand and I will stretch the whole apparatus there before I put it in, so that the B-axle tension screw doesn't hang up on the derailleur in the back here. And then just tighten that back down. Again, make sure that one's good and snug as well too. You don't want to be losing your derailleur. At this point, it's not a bad idea just to take a look at your derailleur alignment in the back. Make sure your derailleur hanger is straight. You'll be able to check this basically by making sure that these pulleys are parallel with your freewheel gears. From there, it's simply a matter of plugging it back in. Reapplying some zip ties to the frame so that it doesn't come magically disconnected. Throw your Velcro Volt Bike Chainstay Protector back on there. And then from there we can turn on the motor and hopefully we have a working motor. There we go. As you can see there was no need to readjust the rear brake because it kept the uh, parameters from before. If your brake was out of adjustment when you started, obviously it may need a little bit more adjustment, but uh, that's a fairly enough thing, fairly fairly easy enough thing to, to adjust. Thank you very much for watching. We'll have some other videos coming up for you in the very near future.